In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a bubbling effect with effervescent tablets. Okay, first get a glass tank that can hold your toy inside. This time, instead of glitter paper behind the tank like I used for the underwater photos with Orbeez, I'm going to use a brick-built background placed inside of it. To weigh down this very buoyant reef, I've tucked a few rocks I gathered from the patio into the back. The front of the base plate will float a little bit higher since all the weight is at the back of the reef. In the tank it goes. Gently though, you don't want to drop the rocks. Next, I'm going to fill it up halfway with tap water. I used tap water instead of distilled because I wanted some impurities floating around to reflect the light back when I hit it with the flash. Kind of like the backscatter you see in underwater photos. I tried to dislodge as many of the air bubbles that were trapped underneath the base plate by shaking it vigorously. It's difficult to tell in the video, but there are tons of minuscule air bubbles in there that also get jostled by the shaking and float to the top. Then I filled the rest of the tank up with water, all the way to the brim. Tap water leaves tiny bubbles that are hard to see with your naked eye. I use a new toothbrush to try to brush them away. These bubbles will form again over time, so that's something you have to keep in mind when using tap water. Next, it's time to introduce the subject. I've got this Lego diver connected to a wire that has a Lego stud on one end. The wire is held by this support I put together. It's an alligator clip, an articulating arm, and a tabletop tripod. I've already positioned the diver to how I want him in the tank. He's turned just enough so I can get part of his face, and his body's pointing slightly downward so he looks like he's diving towards the bottom. The furthest leg is pushed slightly forward to hide the stud that's attached behind it. Now let's get to the lighting. Here are some of the modifiers I'm going to use on my flash. A snoot to narrow the beam of light, and a blue gel or filter to color the light and water, as well as to knock some of the light intensity off the flash. First, I slot my flash into the bracket. It's a manual flash, nothing fancy, but it does have a built-in receiver, so I can trigger this wirelessly from my camera. And next, I just put the adapter with the gel and snoot onto the head. All set up. Let's test the flash to see if the positioning is right. Here's what that looks like in camera. I think the positioning is good, so I'll keep everything how it is, including my camera settings. ISO 100, F5, and 1 over 160, which is my camera's sync speed. If you don't know what sync speed is, or don't know how to use a flash, I'll do a video series about lighting in June. So subscribe to my channel so you can get in on that when I post it. Let's add just a bit more drama before the even bigger drama of the bubbles. Tap the surface of the water with your finger to create some realistic patterns of light underwater and take several shots. Here's a quick tip. Shoot a background plate first. That means no subjects, no wires in the shot. Take out the minifig and shoot a few frames with the agitated water and flash only. This is your background plate, which will make hiding the wires easier in post. Okay, now for the exciting bit. It's my retainer cleaning tablets! You don't need these, of course. The Alka-Seltzer in your medicine cabinet will work just fine. Maybe even better. I'm using what I have on hand. We're just going to break a chunk off the effervescent tablet and wrap cheesecloth or gauze around it. All I had around the house was cheesecloth, so if you have gauze, I think that would work better. Then just wrap wire around the extra cheesecloth to tie it up, kind of like a bindle. The first few moments that the tablet starts bubbling are the ideal moments to take the photos. After that, it starts to break apart, leaving large particles on the minifigure, the floor, and other objects in the tank. Here are a few more tips. Use a tripod. Your other hand will be busy maneuvering the effervescent tablet. Use manual settings. Lock focus and exposure. You don't want your camera suddenly changing your aperture, shutter speed, or ISO. Use burst mode or continuous shooting mode because the bubbles are fast moving and the light patterns from the agitated water keep changing. 
Be careful about what's in the foreground, because it will reflect onto objects inside the tank. My settings are already locked in from the background plate shots I took earlier, so it's time to just shoot. Here's the back of my camera. Let me take you through my editing process for the photos from this shoot. So here in Lightroom, I've narrowed down the images I want to work with. First, a shot with a minifig with agitated water. Next, the start of the tablet fizzing. This one I really like. I was about 4 seconds into the fizzing. I also like this, but maybe the position of the bubbles isn't spot on. And a background plate with agitated water. I'm just going to pick the first shot, the third shot, and the last shot to work with in Photoshop. So right click and select Edit In, Open as Layers in Photoshop. Now we're sent to Photoshop and all the images have loaded as layers. I'm just going to disable visibility on these to have a quick look at how they overlap. Even with a tripod, there's a shift in the image. I'm selecting all three layers and then going to Edit, Auto Align Layers. Leave this set to Auto and click OK. Now all three are aligned. This space here shows how Photoshop had to enlarge the canvas to accommodate the alignment. In this top layer, I like the light on the crab. In the next layer with the bubbles, the crab is in shadow. Let's name the top layer, No Bubbles. The next layer, Bubbles. And the bottom layer, Background Plate. Let's then drag that bubbles layer to the top. With that layer selected, I'm going to add a layer mask. The layer mask is white, meaning everything on this layer is visible. Now with the foreground color set to black, I'm going to select the brush tool. I'm going to change the opacity of the brush to 100% here. Then I'm just going to paint with the brush over this wire to enable the next layer to show through. Now I'm going to back out, make my brush larger, and reduce opacity to about 30%, and brush over this area to blend it better. Let's look at what else I want from the next layer. So I'll go back to the bubbles layer and select the layer mask and paint black in those areas. Now I'm going to select the bubbles and no bubbles layer and merge them into one layer. So right click, merge layers. Now it's one layer called bubbles. I'm going to add a new layer mask to this merge layer so I can do the same thing we did before and reveal sections from the background plate below. So with my brush at an appropriate size and opacity and the foreground color set to black, I just paint over the wire. I'm too close to this hard edge, so I'm going to use another tool for the rest of this job. First, I'll create a new layer at the top of the stack and name it Clone. I'm going to select the Clone Stamp tool, reduce the size of it, and then select the sample area that I want to clone from. I hit Alt on the keyboard and click with the mouse to set the cloning area and move my cursor to where I want to apply the Clone Stamp. I'll do that again, but from the other side. Okay, let's zoom out. The area where that wire used to be looks much darker than its surroundings, so let's blend that better. I'm going to select the layer mask of that layer and use the brush tool at 30% and brush around it. Okay. 
I'm going to select the clone layer here because I want to work on removing this cheesecloth. Let me just zoom in here. I have the clone stamp tool selected and I'm going to pick an area of bubbles that I can use to cover this cheesecloth. Alt click the source. I'm just going to increase the opacity of the clone stamp and then I'm going to paint. I'll select another area from here. I'll make the brush smaller to get in here, and I'm just going to continue selecting new sources and then paint. This process could be more fine-tuned by making selections, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Let's see how that's looking. Okay. That looks good. So let's save. Back in Lightroom, I want to crop, especially this bottom area here. Maybe a centered composition looks nice. Let me just straighten this a bit. Okay, I'm just going to zoom in and go through my usual corrections in detail. 70-ish amount and 30-ish masking. 20-ish luminance. I want to increase exposure of the underside of the minifig, so I'm going to drag a radial filter over the diver and bring up the exposure quite a bit. And lift the shadows a little. I'll probably tighten this up later. Next, I always brighten the faces of my minifig. I'm a portrait photographer, so this is something we tend to do. It's the same thing with the radial filter. And I'm going to use the range mask to select only the yellow color so that the adjustment only affects the face. Let's see the before and after. I'm going to darken the bottom of the photo because it's competing too much with the minifigure. So I'll drag a graduated filter over the area and drop exposure. Then I'm going to spare the crab and other parts from that exposure adjustment by switching to brush, selecting erase, and brushing over them. I'll turn on the overlay so we can see. Let's check where we're at. Before. After. All right, I'm going to tighten that radial filter up because it's just spilling onto the background in a weird way. Next, a tiny amount of vignette to draw more focus to my centered composition. So these bubbles, I want them to pop. I mean, not literally pop, but you know, stand out more. So I'm going to drag a radial filter around them and then increase texture and a bit of clarity. I think I'm going to increase the overall exposure of the image. Looking at the histogram, it looks a bit underexposed. Anyway, I'm just going to bump up exposure by 0.20 and see what that does for the image. I'm just going to drag dehaze a bit to the left to introduce some haze and reduce saturation. I'm also going to make it a touch more aqua by changing the white balance, cooling the temperature and adding a bit of green tint. Now let's look at the before and after to see how far we've come. And that's it. In the end, I think I should have gone with distilled water since the fizzy tablets added the impurities and lots of it anyway. So if these tiny bubbles drive you nuts, use distilled water from the get-go. I hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes look at creating a bubbling effect for toy photography. If you wanna learn about using flash, I'll have some videos up in June. So go grab a flash now and get acquainted with it. I'll post a few links to the flashes I use in the description. 
If you like this video, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. Catch you in June.